Suppose you have a coffee cup sitting on a table. Is it moving? It seems like a pretty simple question. It's not moving on the table. Let's think about it from a different point of view. Now think about the coffee cup sitting on a table in Virginia. Is the coffee cup moving? Well, it depends on your frame of reference. If you are comparing it to the top of the table, it's not moving. But if you're comparing it to the center of the Earth, it is moving as the Earth is spinning all the time. It's also moving relative to the sun and the solar system. Let's consider another example. Relative to the surface of the Earth, Francine is standing still. Fred is on his bicycle. Relative to the surface of the Earth, Fred is moving 5 meters per second. Frank has borrowed Fred's car, and Frank is moving, relative to the surface of the Earth, he's moving 15 meters per second. And now we have Frida. Frida is, run is running, relative to the surface of the Earth, at 5 meters per second. So we have all these different perspectives, all these different frames of reference that we can look at. The question is, what is Frida's velocity? Well, the answer to this question is not as simple as one solution. The velocity is done relative to the frame of reference. So there will be a different velocity measured by Francine, a different velocity measured by Frank, and a different velocity measured by Fred. So we're going to be looking at frame of reference. Sometimes we have a stationary frame of reference. That's the point that we measure velocity from, which is not moving relative to the Earth's surface. In this case, Francine is our stationary frame of reference. We also have a moving frame of reference. That's the point that we measure velocity from moving relative to the Earth's surface. Frank is moving. He's a moving frame of reference to measure Frida's velocity. Fred is also moving. He's a moving frame of reference that we use to measure Frida's velocity. We will find the relative velocity for each perspective by adding two vectors together. Let's do an example. We'll start with Fred. This is the equation we're going to use. To find the velocity of Frida relative to Fred, we have to find the velocity of Frida relative to Francine, and then the velocity of Francine relative to Fred. You can see that we go to get from Frida to Fred, we're going to go from Frida to Francine and Francine to Fred. And you, you'll notice that the um, middle, the Francine part, it comes at the end of the first velocity and the beginning of the second. This is our um, stationary frame of reference. So what is the velocity of Frida relative to Francine? It's 5 meters per second. And what is the velocity of Francine relative to Fred? Fred is moving at 5 meters a second. So from his perspective, he sees Francine moving backward at negative 5 meters a second. This gives us a velocity of Frida relative to Fred of 0 meters per second. And that makes sense. Fred and Frida are both traveling at 5 meters per second. So if Fred looked over at Frida, she would appear to not be moving. Finding the velocity of Frida relative to Francine is simple because Francine is our stationary frame of reference. So since she's not moving, whatever Frida's velocity is, is going to be the velocity relative to Francine. So the velocity of Frida relative to Francine is 5 meters per second. To find the velocity relative to Frank, we're going to use the same approach we did for Fred. We're going to say the velocity of Frida relative to Frank 
equals the velocity of freedom relative to our stationary frame of reference, Francine, plus the velocity of Francine relative to Frank. The velocity of Frida relative to Francine, we've already determined is five meters per second. If you were Frank looking at Francine, what is the velocity of Francine relative to Frank? Well, Frank is moving forward at 15 meters per second. So from his perspective, Francine is moving backward at 15 meters per second. When we add these two numbers together, we get negative 10 meters per second. The velocity of Frida relative to Frank is negative 10 meters per second. We now have three answers for the velocity of Frida. Which one is correct? Well, all of them are, depending on your frame of reference. If you use Fred as your frame of reference, the runner is not traveling at all. If you use Francine as your frame of reference, uh, our stationary frame of reference, Fred is traveling at 5 meters per second. If you use Frank, who's traveling in a car, relative to him, Fred is actually heading in the negative direction. Let's say a scientist has observed an albatross traveling at 35 meters per second. That's nearly 80 miles per hour. Is this reasonable for a bird? Well, let's think about what might also be coming into play. There's a wind behind the bird, and the wind is moving at 23 meters per second. So what is the bird's airspeed? Our equation will be the velocity of the bird relative to the air equals the velocity of the bird relative to the earth plus the velocity of the earth relative to the air speed. We know that the velocity of the bird relative to the earth was 35 meters per second. We know that the velocity of the wind is 23 meters per second. The velocity of the Earth relative to the air will be negative 23 meters per second. So the velocity of the bird with respect to the air will be 12 meters per second, which is about 25, about 25 miles per hour, and that is reasonable for a bird. So even though the bird was traveling at 35 meters per second, on its own, the bird was only traveling 12 meters per second.